Hello and welcome to Karina's channel. In this video, we're about to embark on a thrilling journey into the fascinating world of caffeine. Yes, that magical ingredient that kickstarts our day and gives us that much needed boost of energy. Whether it's a steaming cup of coffee, a refreshing glass of iced tea, or an energy drink, caffeine is an integral part of our lives. But how much do we really know about it? Is it a harmless stimulant or a potential health risk? Is it a savior in disguise or an addictive substance? In this video, we will take a deep dive into its origins, effects on our body, the myths surrounding it, and its potential for addiction. So buckle up, grab your favorite caffeinated beverage and join us on this exciting caffeinated journey. Stay tuned! Ever wondered what caffeine really is and how it affects us? Well, let's embark on this caffeinated journey together. Caffeine, in its simplest definition, is a naturally occurring stimulant found in certain plants. It's the invisible magic that wakes us up in the morning and keeps us alert through those long afternoon meetings. We commonly associate caffeine with our beloved coffee and tea, but it sneaks into our lives in more ways than one. It's the pick-me-up in your favorite energy drink, the secret sauce in your go-to pre-workout supplement, and the active ingredient in some of our most relied upon over-the-counter medications. Imagine a world where the scent of freshly brewed coffee didn't exist. Hard to picture, right? That's how intertwined caffeine is in our daily lives. So the next time you sip on your morning coffee, remember, you're consuming a naturally occurring stimulant called caffeine. The journey of understanding this powerful substance is starting with effect of caffeine on the body. Have you ever stopped to think about how that cup of coffee wakes you up in the morning? It's not just the aroma or the warmth of the cup. It's actually the caffeine, a stimulant that has a profound effect on your body, particularly your nervous system. Now let's get a little sciencey. When you drink a cup of coffee, the caffeine in it is quickly absorbed by your stomach and small intestine. Within about 45 minutes, it's spread to every part of your body, including your brain. In the brain, caffeine has a very particular target, a neurotransmitter called adenosine. Adenosine is like a sleep-inducing agent. When it binds to its receptors in your brain, it slows down nerve cell activity, making you feel drowsy. But caffeine is a bit of a party crasher. It looks enough like adenosine that it can fit snugly into the adenosine receptors in your brain. But unlike adenosine, caffeine doesn't slow down the cells. Instead, it blocks the receptors, preventing adenosine from doing its job. The result? Your nerve cells speed up and your body responds by releasing adrenaline, the fight-or-flight hormone. Your heart beats faster, your pupils dilate, and voila! You feel wide awake and ready to conquer your day. But how long does this caffeine-induced alertness last? Well, it depends on several factors, including your age, weight, and how much caffeine you consumed. Typically, the effects peak within an hour and start to wane after about five hours. But it takes a good 24 hours for your body to completely eliminate the caffeine. And here's a fun fact. Did you know that caffeine's half-life, the time it takes for your body to eliminate half the caffeine consumed, can increase dramatically if you're a smoker? Yes, indeed. It's a quirky little interaction between nicotine and caffeine in the body. So, in essence, the caffeine in your coffee interrupts your body's natural sleep signals, revs up your nerve cells, and gives you a temporary energy boost. That's why you feel that jolt of energy after your cup of joe. Did you know that caffeine isn't just for keeping you awake? It has some medical uses too. Yes, it's true. Caffeine is sometimes used in the medical world. For instance, it can help treat conditions like asthma by relaxing the airways, making it easier to breathe. It's also been known to help with migraines acting as a pain reliever. But don't let these benefits fool you into thinking all caffeine is good all the time. Like a double-edged sword, it can also have its downsides. Consuming too much caffeine can lead to insomnia, making it harder for you to get those much-needed Zs. It can also increase your blood pressure, putting you at risk for heart-related issues. So while caffeine can help you power through that late-night study session or work project, it's important to remember that moderation is key. Don't overdo it. After all, so caffeine isn't just about staying awake, it can be a part of medical treatments too. Are you someone who can't start their day without a cup of coffee? You might be more dependent on caffeine than you think. Caffeine, a stimulant found in coffee, tea, soda, and even chocolate, can be as habit-forming as some illicit drugs. When consumed regularly, your body develops a tolerance to it, requiring more of the substance to achieve the same effects. 
This cycle can lead to dependence, where your body craves caffeine and you find it difficult to function without it. Now let's talk about withdrawal. If you've ever tried to skip your morning coffee and found yourself with a pounding headache by lunchtime, you've experienced caffeine withdrawal. Other symptoms can include irritability, fatigue, and even flu-like symptoms. These symptoms can start as early as 12 to 24 hours after your last caffeine fix and can last up to 9 days. So, how much caffeine is too much? Health experts recommend a daily intake of no more than 400 milligrams. That's about 4 cups of coffee. Consistently exceeding this amount can lead to health risks like insomnia, digestive issues, and even heart problems. And remember, caffeine isn't just in your coffee, it's in your tea, your soda, your chocolate, and even some medications. So, keep an eye on your total daily intake. Remember, moderation is the key when it comes to caffeine consumption. If you're thinking about cutting down on caffeine, you might be considering decaffeinated products. But what does decaffeinated really mean? Well, in the simplest terms, decaffeinated or decaf means that the majority of caffeine has been removed from a product like coffee or tea. This is achieved through several processes, such as water processing, carbon dioxide processing, or using a chemical solvent. But here's the catch. While these methods do significantly reduce caffeine content, they don't entirely eliminate it. Yes, that's right. Your beloved cup of decaf coffee might still be giving you a slight caffeine kick. In fact, a decaffeinated cup of coffee typically contains around 2 to 12 milligrams of caffeine, depending on the method of decaffeination and the type of bean used. Now, that's a far cry from the 95 to 200 milligrams found in a regular cup, but it's not zero. So, what's the upside of going decaf? Well, for those sensitive to caffeine, decaf can be a great. It can reduce jitteriness, restlessness, and other side effects associated with caffeine intake. Plus, you still get to enjoy the rich, delicious taste of coffee without the buzz. However, it's important to note that some decaffeination methods involve chemicals that may have health implications. So, always your research and choose wisely. So the next time you reach for a decaf, remember, it might not be completely caffeine-free. Thank you for joining us on this caffeinated journey. Don't forget to subscribe to Karina's channel for more exciting videos. Stay caffeinated. Stay curious.